This Week at NASA. As Space Shuttle Discovery waits at Launch Pad 39A for its liftoff from the Kennedy Space Center, the STS-131 crew continues to ready itself for its upcoming mission to the International Space Station. Commander Alan Poindexter and his international team of astronauts will deliver science racks for use in the station's laboratories. The crew's been very busy training and uh, we finished our, our uh, terminal countdown demonstration test last week down at the Kennedy Space Center. We have a few more weeks of training to uh, finish up and we'll be ready for launch. Mission specialists Rick Mastracchio and Clay Anderson are scheduled to perform three six and one half hour spacewalks to replace, retrieve, and switch out various elements outside the orbiting complex. For Mastracchio, this will be his third shuttle mission and second series of spacewalks. On first EVA, we'll remove the new ammonia tank from the shuttle and get it onto the station and we'll temp stow it. The second EVA will actually swap the two ammonia tanks, the new one for the old one. And then on the third EVA, we'll be moving the old tank from the space station into the space shuttle's payload bay for return. Uh, that's the biggest challenge. Every EVA, we're going to have to move the robotic arm and has to walk off the robotic arm to a new work site, basically. So there's a lot of teamwork and a lot of integration involved. Rounding out the STS-131 crew is pilot Jim Dutton and mission specialists Dorothy Metcalf Lindenberger, Stephanie Wilson and Naoko Yamazaki of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Discovery's launch is targeted for the morning of April 5th. And liftoff of Space Shuttle to Planet. The final Space Shuttle mission to repair and upgrade the Hubble Space Telescope is the subject of a new IMAX film. Hubble 3D was premiered during a special event held at the National Air and Space Museum in Washington. The movie features the NASA astronauts from STS-125, who serviced Hubble in May 2009. An IMAX 3D camera mounted in Space Shuttle Atlantis' payload bay filmed their progress. A lot of uh, cameras rolling while we were up there. Of course, everybody was watching. It was a mission that kept me on the edge of my seat while we were doing it. I'm just uh, thrilled that everybody worked together and it came out as well as it did in the end. I remember the first Hubble launch, and obviously Charlie Bolin, my boss, was the pilot on the first launch uh, of Hubble. And so we talk about this a lot. And uh, I love the fact that the public sort of gets the story. And it's the melding of science, and human spaceflight in a perfect way, and NASA helping to overcome challenges. Just, you couldn't write a better story. The 43-minute film, narrated by Leonardo DiCaprio, will open in IMAX and IMAX 3D theaters worldwide on March 19th. About 25 seventh grade girls from area middle schools got up close and personal with unique aircraft and high technology when they participated in a Tech Trek tour of the Dryden Flight Research Center. The Tech Trek, to develop interest and excitement about math and science and self-confidence among middle school girls, included tours of Dryden's main aircraft hangar and several specialized research and support aircraft, including the modified Boeing 747 shuttle carrier aircraft and the Global Hawk and Icona unmanned science aircraft. They also tested their piloting skills in one of Dryden's flight simulators and met with female Dryden engineers and interns who encouraged them to pursue their science and mathematic interests through high school and college. Tech Trek was sponsored by the California branch of the American Association of University Women, or AAUW. The 48th Robert H. Goddard Memorial Space Symposium was held in Greenbelt, Maryland, home to the NASA Center bearing the name of America's pioneering rocketeer. Sponsored by the American Astronautical Society, the three-day event drew leaders from NASA, the aerospace industry, and academia, and Washington policymakers to discuss the major issues facing space exploration. Among other topics, panel discussions and presentations addressed commercial space missions, extreme space weather, climate change, and space science, and the future of human spaceflight. Three, two, one. Okay, look away. In March 2006, heliophysicist Lika Guhathakurta was part of a NASA-led science expedition to Libya to witness a total solar eclipse. This international expedition was an unprecedented collaboration with Libyan scientists and researchers from across the globe. 
It was a project befitting a woman compelled to earn advanced degrees in astrophysics from American universities by a lifelong fascination with the sky that began as a child in her native India. My parents never stopped me and said, no, you can't do this because you're a woman. That young girl grew up to eventually become the lead scientist for NASA's Living with a Star program, a set of missions in the relatively new field of heliophysics that focuses on understanding changes in the sun and their effects on us here on Earth. The goal of this program is to really study the sun as a variable star and uh, determine its impact on life and society. The first Living with a Star mission, the Solar Dynamics Observatory, is in space and is expected to begin producing important data about space weather for astrophysicists this spring. The chain effect is just unbelievable, uh, actually, what happens when you have disturbed our environment with the blast from the solar storm. Lika Guhathakurta says her parents never told her she couldn't realize her dreams something she's quick to remind other women who want to make the study of the stars their careers. To pursue something that you believe in just doggedly. Don't let anyone stop you. And that's this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.